OK, final stretch. We're almost done. We have to be, or else I can't go home, right? OK, everybody, let's, let's come back, come back. Uh, I was asked a question um, during the break. This is actually a pretty good thing to, to mention. I show this in a terminal, but within the MATLAB, uh, terminal within you know the, the project directory results first level SPC01 there are all these different dot mat files so one for sub01 two three four five six we've run all the first level analyses for them if you simply uh, double click on one of them it, it loads up the mat file and it also creates this Z variable so what's in Z it's a uh, ROI by or ROI coral or matrix let me scroll up here, which is going to give you the z-score, the, the correlation to the r to z transformation for each of those uh, ROI pairings. So for example, you know, we know that um, the first ROI was frontal pole right, second was frontal pole left. So you simply look at you know, row one, column two, that's the Fisher transformed r to z-score between them. All you have to do at that point, let's say that was the only um, ROI to ROI connection that I was interested in. I simply grab that for every subject and I do a t-test on it because now these correlation values have been normally distributed by that transform. And that's, that's really it. That, that is your result. Right? You can input those into R, do uh, like a group factor, do whatever if you want to. It's a, a similar way to do what we're doing in the con GUI. Uh, I don't think there's something similar in group in second level. Just run all the first level analyses to get, you know, say, like the first three and the, the second three. I would simply, if, if I were to export those values, I would label the, uh, the first three as group one, the second as so second, the yeah. Uh, difference, yeah. Uh, good question. I either you would have to uh, extract from those voxels outside of con if you want to do like a, a, an ROI analysis outside of it. Um, I'd have to think about that some more, but that that's that's what comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's the same idea when you're doing an ROI analysis with task data, right? You need to go back to the individual contrast or beta maps to extract from there. Yeah. Okay. And lastly, this thing right here, which has, um, you know, th th this file is simply all of these sandwiched together. So if you have strong MATLAB chops, you could write a script to do the entire analysis just within that MAT file. So op options for you. The last thing I want to talk about uh, is scripting, scripting your analysis. We've done everything through the con GUI, and that's great. It, it, it is pretty intuitive. It's not that difficult to use. But if you're talking about more than six subjects, even four six subjects, it's a real pain to enter everything by hand, as we, as we are well aware that you know, led to a lot of uh, problems. So. An alternative is to script everything. So everything that we do in the con GUI can be represented in MATLAB code. We're going to create something called a batch. Okay, so I can make a, a batch of cookies. There's a batch of commands that all are linked together somehow. Let me go back to my original directory. So this is the last thing I'm going to have you look at, you know, try to download. This is also from the, the schedule web page. Under day two, scripting your analysis, a template script can be uh, downloaded here. This is on my GitHub. Again, there's, 
uh, I think we did this yesterday for the the extract ROI file. Okay, if you, have, if you know GitHub, you can extract it through there. Or else, if you click on the raw button, you simply uh, right-click on this and click Save As. And remove this .txt extension. We, we actually don't want that. And uh, save it. Save it in whatever directory contains all of your subjects. Now let's take a look at what this actually contains. If you type open con batch template.m, this will open it up in the MATLAB viewer, MATLAB editor. Everybody have that so far? This is a template. Uh, it's not exhaustive by any means. I'll show you Alfonso's uh, help website. This is actually very closely patterned on a, a template script that he has on uh, his website. Um, his includes additional things for you know downloading this sample data set. Uh, mine assumes you've already say downloaded your individual files and are ready to analyze them. So if we, for example, wanted to do a uh, group analysis on these six subjects, let me just walk through some of the highlights of this script. The most important settings that you will probably change are n subjects and tr. Okay. So let's say, for example, I, I just discovered that the tr is actually something else. I want to rerun my analysis, but not do it all manually. Right. In this case, I can select. I just change my repetition time tr down to 2.1, and for analyzing all six subjects, I'm going to leave that as is for now. This script uses both uh, MATLAB commands and con commands. If you're not familiar with MATLAB, uh, don't worry too much. I, I try to explain this a little bit more uh, in, uh, in the book, what's going on. But for those of you who, who do have a little bit more background in it, this con dir command right here, this is a, 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 a from the con library. And it's going to recursively search from your current directory any files matching this so-called regular expression. So in my case, I had sub 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, 06. It's going to grab all of those and put those into a cell string file. So let me just demonstrate that by copying and pasting this into my terminal. I'm going to first clear everything from the workspace and then press enter right there. So you know, pretty quick, and it identified, if I, you know, look within this variable functional file, it's identified everything that matched that particular string. Think of this as the same thing as when we clicked on the functional tab in the con GUI and selected everything by hand. Exact same procedure, but just a lot quicker and more, you can extend it to hundreds, thousands of subjects. It doesn't matter. It's going to grab all of them if they're in the same organization, which is, again, why I like the bits structure so much. Um, next thing I'm going to focus on right here. Uh, let's see. Well, if I run this thing, it's going to analyze everything, and you know, clearly we don't have uh, enough time for it. But... Um, as we look through the rest of this script, you'll come into contact with things like uh, this name right here might seem familiar, setup. This corresponds to the setup tab, right? So every button we clicked has a corresponding uh, field that we can fill in in this batch structure, okay? So the overall name of this structure is called batch, and then a dot separates different fields. So batch means I'm batching everything from the command line. Within the setup field, what do I want to fill in the setup? Uh, say tab, if I'm keeping that in mind separately. So the fields are things like, you know, um, and how do you how do you know what these are supposed to be called? These are all outlined on uh, Alfonso's con batch website, which I'll provide a link to that as well if you want more. Uh, finer control over the details. You don't need to fill in every single field that he specifies on his, on his website. You can only fill in a subset, and the rest will revert to their defaults. 
So you just want to fill in a couple things and change those. That's totally fine. It'll fill in everything else automatically. So to convert some of these things to you know, plain English, a batch setup is new. I'm indicating, yes, this is a new template. I'm not you know, overwriting something that already, exi already exists. Uh, end subjects is going to take on the variable listed up here. In other words, six. The TRRT, actually, let me open up the Congoey to, to show you the correspondence between all these things. And then in the future, you can make educated guesses about what corresponds to what. If you want to do something more, uh, more involved. So let's say, you know, I, I open up a new project. I'm totally new to the con toolbox. Let's call it test or something. doesn't matter. Okay, so if I look at things like, yeah, okay, I just did that uh, is new equals one. It's a flag. One means yes, do it. Zero means, you know, no, don't do it. And subjects is going to correspond to what I have here. So it's the exact same thing as if I just opened this up and typed six in there. Is that, is that correspondence clear to everybody? Okay. You know, repetition time again here would be, say, 2.1. Whoops, 2.1. Yeah, and so on and so forth. Functional data, loading all that, it's the same thing as what we just did here with the, the condor and everything like that. So that's how you'd go through every separate field. Um, you know, things like the denoising filter, you may have noticed that before. Uh, let's see if I can just run a subset of this. I'd have to do pre-processing though, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it. But if uh, you're so inclined throughout the rest of, say, today, let's say, um, yeah, I'm not going to step through all this. Just be aware, I mean, what, what I have here is a pretty bare bones template, but if you simply replace, you know, number of subjects with however many subjects you have in your current directory, and you're pointing towards where the functional and anatomical images are, it's going to run through everything start to finish from this script. You don't have to do anything else besides that. So let me back up here and let's do it for one subject. Let me see, do I need to change anything else? I Oh, okay. I need to make sure that's only in a, a directory with one subject. So let me think. Mm, what would be the best way to do this? You know what? Put this back to six and just take it from me. If, if you then run this entire script, from your command line, you can, you can do this now if you want to. You can do it later. There, there's nothing more within the Congoey we're going to be uh, doing as a class. Well, I just want to follow along with like choosing a, a template. I'm just going to, okay, don't start this yet. What are we going to have people do? Don't start it. Don't start it. Do it, do it on your own outside of this because um, I do actually want your GUIs to be free for a second. But... Uh, Let's see here. I'm going to close out of this. So let's say I filled in everything. I have you know six subjects in my current directory. This is you know indeed what I want to do. I'll simply uh, type in con batch template and press enter. So unless there's like an overwrite error, this should run without any problems, right? In the command window, you'll see, uh, you know, everything being run as it goes on. So we've seen, we've seen uh, this happen before when we ran everything through the con toolbox. Just now everything is from the command line and it's very easy to apply to any new situation as long as your data is in bits format. Okay. So we ran through that pretty quickly, but so just use a template. I mean, if, if, you, if you download everything 
you know, from scratch. You could download uh, from, say, another another study even. Just make sure that, you know, this the correct number of subjects and that the, I think these strings should be virtually identical. Just make sure that they, they match up and leave everything else the same. It, it should work. I, I encourage you to try that out. All right. For me, I'm going to exit out of this because you know I need, need my command line. Okay, so to finish, uh, any questions about that? Any? I, I, it was a really, really quick overview of that. This is a template again. May, let me show you actually. Is it here? I forget. You know, I'll, I'll send I'll send out this link. Don't worry about that. Uh, Paste the syntax. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yes. Oh, paste, paste. Yeah. Mm, you know, I, I've tried that with one subject. So when you, when you save out your project.mat file, it does have all these different fields that have been, that correspond to what you put into the, the, the con GUI. But if I tried to use the con batch function on it, it didn't work. So I just, you know, reverted to using this, this template script that he had created. So I, I can't say that. I can't say that it doesn't exist. I didn't look into it too hard, but it doesn't seem that when you save out the mat file for a single subject, you can simply change a couple fields and then run it. Now, if you want to, um, I should say this. Let's say that you have your, uh, your con arithmetic project.mat file, right? Well, let me erase. We'll clear all this first. So load con arithmetic project .mat. You have a con x variable in your workspace, right? So it has things like in the, in the setup field, for example, you may have you know all the cells that you filled in, everything like that. If I then change something like uh, RT, for example, right? Which is our, our TR. I said it was you know two 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 two. Yeah. Then I save. Um, let's see here. What? I save that right. So I just changed one thing. I've changed the the TR for that. So it used to be 3.56. Go ahead and open that mat file that I changed. It should be reflected in that. Yeah, so now it's two. So that is something you could do if, if you were so inclined. I find this other method a little bit easier to, to use, but. Um, if you really, really like the GUI, but you like to make some changes outside of that, that's also an option. All right. So the very last thing in the last hour that we have, and this may not take that long actually. Uh, in, in a lot of workshops, you know, what, what, I, what I really strive for is, you know, can you apply this to your own data? That, that's the goal, right? Obviously. Uh, we, we've done things just, just to walk through with a pretty, pretty simple design. It wasn't too big. It was pretty you know, straightforward to analyze. But uh, there are other open access data sets available. So I'm going to give us a few options. Um, I'm just looking for a majority vote. Doesn't, you know, can't, can't satisfy everybody, obviously. But if we could, you know, identify something we, we want to look at, maybe answer some kind of question, we'll just get started with that. Maybe set up a single subject here, and then I'll go back to uh, Michigan and 
try to, to create a walkthrough for that particular data set. So, and then, you know, send it out to you. You can, you can look at it in a couple of weeks. And just to give us a, a kind of a wider uh, palette to use for things we're going to analyze, right? So let me give, uh, I'm not going to go into PowerPoint mode, but let me see here. There were, a couple, there were a few identified, and if somebody has something else they know of that may seem to be a really good candidate, please, uh, please let me know. Come on. So without going into presentation view, um, so you know, resting state, task-based, both. The data set we use has both resting state and task-based. Uh, you know, clinical population is that something we we'll, we'll want to look at? Pre-post design between subjects, both. Um, I just have a few that you know have you know popped out to me. So we'll we'll walk through this. Also, if doing pre-post. Yeah, if you're doing pre-post or between subjects, that also requires quite a bit of power to, to be aware of that. Okay, so one is a pretty similar to what we did before. Uh, also pretty simple. This is a flanker task. I, I use this a lot for demonstrating uh, really simple task-based analyses. So this would be a, a pretty simple extension. It's task-based. You can do uh, grab. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to just spout gibberish. Generalized PPI between incongruent and congruent analyses, right? So if you have some hypothesis about kind of control between different regions being modulated by that, you know, that's, that's a pretty simple extension to, uh, to do. And I mean, who knows? I don't have a strong theory about that. So simple to analyze, but maybe, maybe too basic, not too interesting. I have three ones here. One was music-induced analgesia. Right, so pain killing. Uh, this is a bete between groups analysis, and there are also um, two conditions between group. I forget the details about that, but th again, this is more like a, uh, a you know between subjects also has conditions we could do for a, a GPPI if we wanted to, and it also has resting state, I believe. And the last one is uh, this is probably the most difficult one to tackle, but intrinsic connectivity in adults with hemispherectomy. Uh, somebody, was it, uh, uh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, asked about how do you mask out a, a lesion area. So I don't know. This would be a good opportunity to do it. Um, yeah, I'm not saying we, we, I'm not really saying that we have to do it, but uh, I will, I'm just going to editorialize for a little bit. Uh, I will say that for people who are, say, working with lesion data, there isn't a lot of documentation about how to do it, right? There's no real standard for how people should uh, use a mask for that, for example. It's very hard to find. I've started to, to try to document it, but um, I've been talking with uh, this researcher at BU, Swathi Kiran, who, who studies speech disorders, and they're, you know, they're, they're really interested in, in having something like that. So those are a few. That, okay, hemispherectomy and anal music-induced analgesia and the flanker task. I mean, you know, I, ideally, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'll create at least a few, uh, kind of longer term. But if, if you wanted something in the next, say, couple weeks that we could do on our own, if we wanted to start something here, which one of these three would people want? So uh, flanker task. Who, who wants to do the flanker task? Okay, zero. Uh, Music-induced analgesia. It's a fair amount. I'm seeing about maybe at least a dozen. Okay. Uh, adults with hemispherectomy, resting state analysis. Okay, a couple. So maybe music-induced analgesia. Okay, let's let's take a look at that. Um, so if you go to Open Neuro and simply look, search for music-induced analgesia, you should be able to find it. Um, I, have, I have a link right here, so I'm just going to follow that. Okay. So let's get acquainted with this. This is, I believe, I do think they have, uh, oh, so this, they, they don't have resting state, but it will be, we will be able to do a GPPI analysis on this particular one. 
and compare groups. Wait a minute. Oh! I tricked you. It's a flanker task. I was like, what the heck? I really want to do the flanker task. I must have copied the wrong link. <laughs> Four scump. Where is that? Oh, here we go. Why, when I search for music induced analgesia, is Forrest Gump the first <laughs> thing that comes up? That's a lot of views. Wow. Okay. All right, this, this seems pretty interesting. So, study analgesic effects of music and chronic pain. Anybody study pain here? Uh, I used to do that in graduate school. Okay. Yeah, this might be particularly interesting for, for you. Uh, so 20 people in, in each category. So this is going to be a pretty big data set. Just, just be aware of that. Uh, so two groups, ones with fibromyalgia and 20 healthy controls, uh, resting state fMRI, and also before and after uh, pink music or pink noise exposure. Also includes T1 and DWI signal. Oh, this is very cool. Okay, so the, the first thing that, that I would look at for this, um, you know, we'll, we'll need some basic parameters here, data set description. Um, did they include that? Oh, no, sorry, I'm looking for the TR. It's going to be within here. I guess they, everything is in bid for, format, obviously. ANAT, DWI, and let's see what the functionals look like. So get oriented here. So it seems like there are four resting state ones. Okay. I may have to, to look at this preprint to see exactly which run corresponds to, to before and after, but we can still just uh, you know practice loading some of this and getting the analysis set up. All right. So for right now, let's just analyze a, a single subject, let's say. You know, when I go home, get, get more of the details, I'll have a, a more fully fleshed out way to do this. But uh, to start out with, let's download you know, the sub01 anat directory, sub01 anat, sorry, file. Um, I'm going to briefly view this JSON file because I want to know what the TR is. So you got to scroll up here. Repetition time is three seconds. And it looks like the acquisition was interleaved, if I'm reading this correctly. So this is a pretty standard Siemens interleaved sequence. You know, zero, this is second one, third one, fourth one gets up to uh, 1.465 seconds, goes back, fills it in. This is an interleaved sequence. So those are the two main things I need to know. And then let's say, yeah, let's just download um, the bold one nifty and bold two nifty. Task rest two. All right. From your desktop, let's create a, okay, so if we're on the MATLAB terminal, type cd tilde desktop, and then type mkdir parenthesis uh, single quote music analgesia, whatever you want to call it. It, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, because I'm lazy, I'm just going to use the finder to transfer these. So mine went into downloads. Okay, so these these three most recent ones right here, I'm going to move into uh, music analgesia. So let's select those, move those over. We also remember have to create funk and anat directories for this. Yeah. You can do this however you want. I'm, I'm, I'm making, uh, doing this all from Finder. 
Oops. Funk. I have to put it in the folder too. And add. Okay. And I'm moving the uh, bold data into funk and the anatomical data into an ad. Right? While I'm here, if you have that uh, con batch template script, create a copy of that and then move it into. This isn't required, but I just want to see if it works. If I, if, you know, I talked a big game about how it's, you know, transferable. Let, let's let's actually see if that works, and then rename it con batch template. So just take a minute. I want to make sure that we're all at this same location right here. So we have a new folder on our desktop, music analgesia. We have a func directory, an at directory, which contain the corresponding uh, functional and anatomical files. So well, before I go further, let me ask you this. Um, you know, I'll read the preprint and get a better sense of it. But so we have, uh, you know, we have a kind of like pre-post by a group interaction we could look at, right? So does anybody want to make just a hypothesis just off the cuff? It, it doesn't have to be like good. <laughs> just something to, to just to work with as a baseline before we do something more complicated. So two groups pre-post. Does, uh, and let me check one more thing. Do they have any individual difference measures? That's also a good thing. That's not helpful. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this is participants TSV, which is also at the open neuro. Uh, open neuro website. Bump this up. So we have age, we have sex, group. Oh, also really important to look at because, you know, the first 23 subjects of the fibromyalgia group and the last 24 are healthy controls. You said 20 and 20, but it looks... I don't want to say remove subjects for some reason. That, that's not accurate, but whatever. So we have age. We have you know years of fibromyalgia. We have a few other things. Um, I'm looking for some kind of pain rating that we could possibly use to see whether it how it how it's correlated with changes in correlation, both before and after. But assuming we have something like that, what? We don't have to go through every possible hypothesis today, but what, what's something that somebody would be interested in? It could be any, any of the analyses that we did so far. We have quite a few options. I'll just lead with one. Uh, main effect of group. In, 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 and restricting that to, say, pre. Uh, what, what, what does the connectivity profile look like between them? Okay. And that's one. That's one possible thing we can look at. Uh, anything else? Before and after, main effect? I don't know. Okay. It is? Oh, okay. Oh, good to know. Good to know. Okay. And then scan two is before and after. Uh, what was the other one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the first one was like a, a baseline scan or something? Yeah. The baseline and then the URL. Then pink noise, VRF, resting state 2, pressure, resting state 3, VRF, and VRF, resting state 4. Okay, so yeah, they're trying to do it before and after both of those conditions, right? So before and after pick noise, before and after music. And I'm assuming they counterbalanced it, maybe. If they didn't, I mean, we can't do anything about that, but yeah. 
Okay, okay. All right, yeah, I see those here in this individual differences. So, okay. Hmm. All right, well, we, you know, we can come up with individual different stuff later. For now, though, uh, everybody have everything organized that particular way? What I want to try and see is can we just run that script for a single subject and will it analyze everything? Yeah. So I'll close out of that. Uh, from the terminal, going to music analgesia. Um, open this batch template. Because we have to change this to one, one subject. Everything else should be, yeah, it's the same, same string format. So, oh, there's one difference. Okay, after rest in this string right here, the functional file, put an asterisk because there are multiple uh, indexes for run. For the anatomical file, this should be, this should work. But that's the only change we need to make. And TR was three if I remember correctly, right? Okay. Let's see. I'm going to call this something different. I'm going to call it um, music scripted. Looking through the rest of these, this should be fine. Interweave Siemens, that's right. Um, anything else here? You'll see on lines 556, uh, I'm going to uncomment all of those. I'm going to change this as well, music scripted. Because I want it to stop as soon as we get to um, pre-processing and setup steps for now. Yeah, okay. And everything else I'm going to comment out. I just you know, want to see if it loads everything and starts to run appropriately. So there's this uh, percentage sign. Just use that to comment all that out. Okay, looks good. I want to see if this actually works. I am in the folder that contains con batch template. So if I type that, Will it do the pre-processing, right? You know, regardless of what our eventual analysis is going to be, this is going to be the same for all of them. In the future, I might make this a function where you input like the name of the study, so it will automatically fill in the script. But for today's purposes, it, it should be okay. So it looks like it's it's running. Yeah, no, this this is good. You know, we'll we'll wait a little while, see how long this takes. But in the meantime, uh, so as I'm working through this. I mean, you can obviously do this yourself too. You, you have the tools now to do it. And obviously you can just use this script with a few minor modifications. So, you know, kind of a, a I'll say, quality check would be something like, um, yeah, fibromyalgia versus controls. 
I would assume there probably is a functional connectivity difference between the groups if I had to, to, to bet my money on it. Um, also, the things like you know before and after, pink noise. What is pink noise? Really? White noise wasn't good enough. Okay, it's more annoying or something. It's like got frequency. What? Oh. Oh, so it's it's good noise. Okay. Okay, so it's not painful. Okay. So comparing that to structured musical noise. Okay. All right, okay. Very good. Okay, well, I mean, we reached a, you know, agreement pretty quickly on the on the data set. Um, you know, th this isn't by any means, you know, complete what we're going to do. Obviously, we're going to run everything. But as we're wrapping up here, I mean, we still technically have 40 minutes. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions as it, as it is analyzing this. Uh, Anything still unclear? Anything that, that you would like to see in this analysis we're doing the next couple weeks or so? Um, yeah, Allison. Yeah, I, I guess I'm curious like, how easy it is to set up this like, as a parallel software. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah uh, I wish I could stop this as it's running. There, there is a lot of documentation on the Khan website about how to parallelize it. Uh, let me just go to that, actually. I forget what is Alphany. Yeah. I guess, too, also with Khan, like, how, I mean, the graphics are beautiful. Um, yeah. But, like, how compatible is it to have to, like, uh, kind of strip down the next environment without, you know, like, a, a certain graphics processor? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm not the one to... To ask about that, I I, I don't know. Um, it is I think it's based on I, I forget the language that it's that some of the graphics are based on, but yeah. Um, so you're asking like how much you could, how much res you know like the automatic updating as you change things. Could you do away with that if you want to ease the burden on your graphics processor? Yeah, I I, I don't know. You know, he, again, I don't have the con toolbox open at my disposal, but he, he usually does have a lot of options for people who want to you know, change how it runs. There might be something in there. But as far as par parallelizing the script, I, I keep thinking I'll find it on his home website, but it's not there. Let's see. Parallel. Parallelization, yeah, it does support that. So, yeah, take a look through that. I do remember seeing some buttons in the GUI for how to do that. You don't need to script it, but you can, yeah. It should speed it up quite a bit. Okay. You know, since I had everybody come here early, I have no problem with, you know, people also leaving half an hour early unless you want to, you know, stick around, talk a little bit. Um, I'm just, you know, we have a, a data set chosen, we have an analysis script that works, and now we can, you know, hash out some of the finer details. So I told you kind of what my plan is over the next two, three, four weeks. I mean, I can't promise I'm going to get to that quickly, but I, I want to, you know, get back to everybody with, a script that seems to do the, you know, some basic analyses that we'd like to look at here, which might be a little bit more interesting and involved in what we did with six subjects. It just was a, a time constraint, and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, you'll have more options at your disposal now. It's not just something we did here, and y you can't do it anywhere else. So uh, I'll, I'll say with that, thank you so much for your time. I really love being back in Columbus. Um, this is always a pleasure to do. So thank you so much for attending. Thank you so much for being early and on time. I mean, I, I didn't want to be here either at that, at that time, but this, this really was great, and I hope to come back at some point in the future. So thank you. Thank you.